I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today, I want to explain to you two systems that exist in every human body. Both of these systems are connected with your CNS system. That's your central nervous system. When you understand how these two systems work in the human body, you will understand the impact of stress on your life. You will understand the impact of how and why you cannot sleep. And when you cannot sleep, what happens in the human body? There are just two fundamentals that you need to understand today. If you learn this, like you learned your multiplication tables in school, everything else will start to make sense to you and you will slowly start to put this into practice. We have two systems, part of the central nervous system. One is called the sympathetic nervous system. That's the, uh, uh, let's just say it's the SNS, the sympathetic nervous system. And then we have the parasympathetic nervous system. Now we need both of these systems. They're good for us. They're both great for us. The sympathetic nervous system is our fight and flight response. In order for us to be active, in order for us to respond, to uh, be alert, we move into the fight and flight response. And in order for us to sleep and to digest our food and to relax and completely rest, the body switches from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system. So there are two systems. Now the problem is when we stay in the sympathetic nervous system too long. Let's say we're crossing a road and a car comes across, you know, and with our reflex actions, we're able to jump back in that split second. That was your sympathetic nervous system, your fight and flight response. Your eye saw the car coming too quickly and it put you into stress mode, okay, because it's a life and death situation. And that stress mode enabled enough of cortisol and adrenaline to move and create a signal to your muscles so that you can jump out of the way in a second. If you were in a parasympathetic nervous system, you would have been knocked down by the car. So you do see the sympathetic nervous system is required for survival. Okay, whenever we get into an argument with your boss, your spouse, a friend, a stranger, or whatever, you move into the sympathetic nervous system because the body perceives a threat and it prepares you for that. It's called a fight and flight response. Why? The moment we move into the sympathetic nervous system, there are many, many changes that happen in the body. Number one, the digestive system stops working. Okay, now picture this. You don't want to be, okay, you want to be digesting food when you're when you're thrown a threat your way, okay? So the first thing the body does is it stops all digestion of food, okay? There is no more digestion that happens. Your heart rate increases, cholesterol levels increase, your blood pressure increases, all for good. It starts sending more blood to your muscles so that you can fight off, it's a fight or flight response. Remember, you can fight or you can flee. Picture this, I put you in a room, okay? And I release a tiger in that room. There are two ways you are gonna react. You're gonna to prepare to fight to defend yourself or you're gonna to prepare to run if you can. Fight and flight response. For that, you need an enormous amount of energy. That energy comes from cortisol, adrenaline, so your blood pressure goes up, your, you know, your heart rate goes up. That's brilliant for you, okay? Now the event is over and your body relaxes. Your blood pressure comes down, your heart rate comes down, your digestion slowly starts to work again and you slowly move into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. Okay, so now what happens when we are constantly stressed out? We stay in the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, my stress is supposed to end and I'm supposed to move to the parasympathetic nervous system where in rest and digest, my body can now start breaking down food, assimilating it, creating energy reserves, repairing the body, cell growth, repair, okay, and rest. In a state of rest, everything gets better. We get rejuvenated, we get ready for the next stressful event. Now. That's the natural working of the human body. What happens if I stay stuck in the sympathetic nervous system, which means I'm chronically stressed, a normal day in the life of millions of people. You wake up sleep deprived, you're stressed, you're irritable, you're hungry, you're angry, and you move on from one stressful event to another. And when you're alone, boredom hits you or the emotional baggage you're carrying or something that someone said to you starts playing in your mind because right now you're taking a little bit of a break and your mind starts moving to all the negativity. So from the time you wake up till you sleep, you're in the sympathetic nervous system. Your body never really resumed homeostasis, which means your blood pressure stayed high, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your heart rate, everything stayed high, leading to inflammation, which is the root cause of every disease. It's good for us to get into the sympathetic nervous system, but quickly, 
We must come back to the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, let me explain to you, when you are in the sympathetic nervous system, let me explain what is happening to you. Okay, you're obviously in stress mode. The first thing that it gets impacted, I've actually made a list of this. It's so interesting for you to relate all of these issues with the chronic stress that you're going through because most human beings are constantly in the sympathetic nervous system. So you think you're taking a break and you start scrolling down social media and you see stuff that you don't like or you look at the news. You're taking a break, but you're still in the sympathetic nervous system because you're getting stressed out about what you're seeing or what you're seeing on the news or social media. So we're really very rarely taking a complete break where we can be in the parasympathetic nervous system. So when you're in the sympathetic nervous system, here's what's getting affected. Number one, nutrient absorption. So you could be eating under stress or quickly because you want to finish fast or you're distracted or you're having a working lunch. You're eating under stress. You think you're eating a good meal. You could be eating a salad. You could be eating pumpkin seeds, garlic, mushrooms, whatever it is. But nutrient absorption doesn't work well when you're in the sympathetic nervous system, which is why the parasympathetic nervous system is the system that we should be eating our meals. It is designed for that rest and digest. In the parasympathetic system, when we're eating, we break down our food beautifully, produce the right amount of acids, enzymes, absorption. Everything is perfect. But if you're trying to eat when you're stressed out, Number one problem, nutrient absorption. So a lot of people come and say, hey, Luke, I eat everything organic. I fly my food in from London and all of that stuff, but I'm malnourished, I'm weak, I'm fatigued because it doesn't matter what you're eating. It's how you're eating it, when you're eating it, and how your body is breaking down what you eat. Then what also goes up when you're in the sympathetic nervous system is nutrient excretion. We have urinary loss of calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, chromium, selenium. Your body releases this automatically when you're in the sympathetic nervous system. Then we start having nutrient deficiencies, particularly vitamin C, vitamin B, zinc, and selenium, which is why our immune system falls when we are in the sympathetic nervous system for too long. Our blood cholesterol goes up, our triglycerides go up, we have something called blood platelet aggregation, which is really bad for heart disease. Okay, then we have salt retention, that's why your blood pressure also goes up. Your, the, the retention of salt in your blood is higher when you're in the sympathetic nervous system. We all know cortisol goes up, that's your trigger. Your gut bacteria starts to decrease. Your oxygen supply starts to decrease, which is why you start shallow breathing and your heart rate goes up. Your thermic efficiency decreases. Your hydrochloric acid, which is your stomach acid, increases. That's why when you're stressed out for too long, why do you start feeling acidic? There's no food in your system, but you're still producing stomach acid in larger amounts. Your growth hormones goes, goes down, your thyroid hormone goes down, which is why we know there's a direct connection between every thyroid patient and anxiety and stress. No thyroid patient can ever deny that they are not stressed or anxious because we know stress and anxiety is one of the main reasons why you have chronic low levels of thyroxine. Your gastric emptying time increases, uh, decreases, which means you're holding food in your system for a longer time. That's why you bloat up, you get gassy, you have flatulence. These are the things. Your food sensitivities and allergies increase when you're in the sympathetic nervous system for a longer time, which is why we start getting hives, we start getting rashes, eczema, psoriasis. The flare-ups happen when you're in the sympathetic nervous system, you're constantly stressed. Your acid reflux increases because your LES, which is your lower esophageal sphincter, opens up when you're in the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, your risk of osteoporosis increases, oxidative stress increases, muscle mass decreases, sex hormones go right down, inflammation goes up, kidney function goes down. You see, this is beautiful when the sympathetic nervous system is activated for a small period of time. But today when it's constant stress throughout the day, this is why you get sick. This is why we get sick. This is why we create our own inflammation. Now you can take pills and medicine, not against that. But if you're not addressing the root cause of your problem, is it solving your problem? No, you have to address the root cause, which is how do I get out of the sympathetic nervous system quickly? Now let's talk about the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest. You cannot sleep at night if you're in the sympathetic nervous system. It'll be like you're struggling to. You can't sleep when you're in the wrong system. When you're in the wrong environment, if something cannot happen, it cannot happen. You can only sleep when you're able to move to the parasympathetic nervous system because that is the signal to your body and brain, rest and digest. 
fall asleep. So if your mind is constantly thinking, there's chatter in your mind, you're in the sympathetic nervous system, it is impossible to sleep. So you start popping pills. Okay, you pop pills and because it's a strong chemical, you will sleep with all the side effects, the addictions all happening. Take it if you need it. But at some, day, some point, you are going to be forced into addressing the root cause of your problem, which is stress and handling that stress. So all digestion, complete, complete beautiful digestion. How many of you, I know so many people, Luke, I have all my acidity when I'm in India, I go to the Maldives, I go to New York, and I have no issues, I'm eating the same food. Why? You're in a different environment. You're on a holiday, you're enjoying yourself. You're in the parasympathetic nervous system, which is why you can break down your food, you can sleep better, but you come back to your environment of stress and worry and hustle and bustle, you're eating the same foods, but you have the same problems because you cannot digest food or you cannot sleep when you're in the wrong nervous system. So how do we move from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system? The quickest way that you can trick your body is by slowing down your breath. Because your breath is an indicator. If I start shallow breathing right now, the body thinks there's stress because shallow breathing is a trigger and it starts producing more cortisol and adrenaline. Most of us right now, how many of you right now are breathing to your normal capacity? Check, pause for a moment. Most of you would be shallow breathing. Now take a deep breath. That's how you should be breathing. That's why we say practice your pranayama. Practice your deep breathing exercises. Exercise because you train your lungs to utilize oxygen the right way. Your capacity to utilize oxygen is the right way. So let's say right now you are in the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, there's some stress going on in your life. No one can make, wave the magic wand and remove your stress. But how do you trick your body into getting out of the sympathetic nervous system? Very simple. Slow down your breathing. Start taking long inhales and longer exhales. So you trick your body. The stress is still there in your life. But you move to the parasympathetic nervous system. Let's say right now it's lunchtime and you're stressed out. You're not supposed to eat right now because you know eating when you're stressed is useless. In fact, you're going to put oxidative stress and burden on your digestive system, which is why indigestion follows stressful eating. But I can sit, keep my back straight, take six to eight deep, long breaths and move to the parasympathetic nervous system and enjoy my meal in a sacred way. The same thing before going to bed. If my mind is constantly thinking and I take a couple of deep breaths, which comes from meditation, pranayama, call it what you want. I am moving from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system. And with practice, I am able to make that shift and fall into a deeper sleep and get my quality sleep. These are the basics of the human body. It's as simple as that. When the body is going into shock because of accident, trauma, or what, they put oxygen on you. The first thing that they do is they will put an oxygen mask on you because it is required for homeostasis. It is required for homeostasis. So this is the quickest thing. The other things that you can do is, of course, exercise, nature, spending time with family, laughing a lot. Laughter therapy is beautiful. Taking life easy, learning to let go, learning to accept, not being attached or entangled in other people's emotions or things that don't serve you anymore, getting rid of toxic friends, toxic people, toxic partners. All of these things can also easily move you from sympathetic to parasympathetic because you're changing your environment. But if you can't change all of those things and you have to continue being with those toxic people in your life, your breathing is your magic wand. When you're in a stressful situation, inhale, exhale. And after you practice pranayama and morning breathing exercises, after a while, you don't have to remind yourself. It becomes your normal way of breathing when you're stressed. And when you master that, you can be in the most stressful situation, but you are in control, in control. You are not harming your body by keeping it in the sympathetic nervous system because you have mastered how to breathe. It's as simple as that. So now that you've understood the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, all your excuses and all your blame about, oh, but everyone has stress. Oh, I'm going through stress. I'm a victim. All of that stuff. Yes, I'm sorry you are. Okay, we wish it could be different, but your body doesn't care about that. The sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system is still going to continue working the way it's supposed to, irrespective of all your problems in the world. So the only person who can change that is you. Learn to breathe the right way. Learn to meditate. Get a spiritual practice. 
Take care of your diet, sleep well at night, eat well, learn to manage sympathetic and parasympathetic. Being in sympathetic too long is not natural. It's not normal. It's not okay. So when you realize these things, that's how your life's going to get better. That's how you invest in prevention. That's how when you're sick, you learn. You learn to cooperate with your body and understand that healing cannot happen when the body is in the sympathetic nervous system. So if you want to heal, you have to move to the parasympathetic nervous system. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.